Oh shit! Sorry, I didn't see you there. As you can see, I've been hard at work maintaining this hair and frolicking in the ocean, as mermaids often do. Hello, everyone. Summer is upon us, and I'm ready to dive into some super cold seawater. But before I do, I gotta finish up with this three-part Voyage of the Basset design deep dive. And I do mean deep dive because it's mermaid this month, as you all can see. So we're tackling some aquatic creatures. The basic mermaid design you see here has a full time-lapse video available over on my Patreon, but for this month I wanted to make a creature for the main video. I'm shouting out the book f for this month specifically because the movie slash miniseries for sure didn't have the budget for any sort of convincing mermaids or today's project, our lazy brown-eyed bestie the sea serpent. The movie has kind of a nod to mermaids and the sea serpent in this genuinely unhinged video sequence where Miranda, like, dances the ship to safety by communing with some bronze mermaid statuettes. The sea serpent itself is referenced in the movie via this puppet the head troll Skotos is dancing with, as if to imply he's in control of it. But the book, by comparison, doesn't really do any of that shit. Um, the way the um, mermaids and the sea serpent are utilized in the book, it's it's more like, oh, it bumped up against the vessel and has pu like pulled them off course by accident. Skotos had nothing to fucking do with it, and I don't know why the movie decided that he had to. The book has these gorgeous watercolors and ink sketches of the creature, and I love them so much. It's been the number one reason I decided to actually stick with this theme after I came up with it. Um, that's why I wanted to like continue on this three month long project, because I love the look of this guy. He's got such an insanely chill energy, and I personally love to make those like little fins with the membranes in them. So with all of those fins and drippies and tendrils, this is kind of like my entire wheelhouse. The rest of the rig on this is going to be super duper easy, so I figured why not ruin my life with a billion more secondary little things to make move, you know? I'm not really going to be getting into the design sketch because we're kind of just basing this off of um, JCA's iconic illustrations. I'm not interpreting or doing any comparative mythology here because I love the vibe of this illustration so much already. Uh, he's going to be modeled as is, so let's get started. The first thing I did was hit the default cube with a subdivide modifier and begin shaping it according to my dark deeds. For this project, that meant tapering one end to a point and flattening it out a bit like a snake's head. I applied that, deleted half of the head, and added a mirror modifier. For this character, it was super important to have big, expressive eyes that he'd be able to open and close, so I added a mirrored sphere here situated it on the head and began moving and sculpting the head a bit using proportional editing. To give him that sort of slutty, half-lidded look, I duplicated both the bottom and top half of these spheres so I could animate them with shape keys. I separated them off the main mesh and gave them their own object. It took a tiny little bit to fine tune the shape keys in question so they look nice, so I'm um, just gonna futz with that a tiny bit. Once I was happy with the eye shape keys, I started on his mouth. I wanted this model to have a functional jaw, so I cut him a nice big mouth around the head, making sure to make any endgons I created into triangles or squares. Then I extruded the edge of the mouth inward a few times, corrected the interior structure, and closed up any gaps inside the mouth, again being mindful of the amount of verts that this would result in. And now we have a Kermit the Frog looking face. I do a similar operation for his nostrils. Cry. 
remove the back of his head so I can get a better neck hole for him, and create the neck by making a separate cylinder, removing the mirrored half and merging it with the face object, bridging the gap between the head verts and the body verts. To make the bony facial protrusions for his many fins, I used the curve tool to sort of trace my reference image, pushing and pulling vertices and like the fullness of each curve to keep the proportions accurate. There really isn't a lot to narrate over on this one, so I'm just kind of going to fix my hair real quick. I'm so sorry. I know I'm being vain, but like... <laughs> Look at how good this looks! I'm just, I'm so proud of it. Anyway, never mind. Now that that's all done, I convert all of those curves into a mesh, and immediately close all the tops and start adding seams, just so I can hop into painting faster and not have to worry about that later on. I then get to work closing up all the gaps between the curves. This will become that translucent seafoam green membrane you can see here in the illustration. This is really time consuming and capital F focused work because I have to loop cut all of these a few times to get the shape right and if I have too many triangles it creates extra work to fix. It's easy enough to get started on, you just have to be able to keep the same level of focus and move stuff around in it if it threatens to intersect with other pieces. This stuff is all super specific to your projects though, like I wouldn't suggest it for any other piece of work with fins like these. This model, th this model here, these fins weren't done that way and I genuinely wouldn't suggest it unless you have something that needs to look this intricate, because fun fact, this gets even more annoying later on.
Once those are done, I can add a mirror modifier and get it situated on the model. And now we're done with the fins. I had to make an extra fin here because I realized that I had taken the image too literally and needed to make a big top fin that was overlapped by the other ones and it didn't really register in my brain that that's what it was the first time so I went ahead and repeated the process outlined a little bit earlier. To work on all the little nubbins on his head, I separated the two little fin nubs between the eyes, applied the mirror modifier, and duplicated them and just placed them all over the head where, where it would look nice. Now it came time to do the most strenuous and annoying bit booling all of the fins to the face and cleaning up the vertex situation. I don't like to use the boolean function for this exact reason. It works great if you're making a model that's already posed or if you're like separating out, if you're separating pieces of a model that you want to be able to make assembly like ready. But for a character model like this for animation, it's it's such a fucking pain. Um no thank you, unless it's something like this where my preferred way to do it would make it look less nice. It isn't necessarily hard, it's just really, really boring. You have to look at all the surfaces and vertices and decide which need to be merged or flat out deleted and resurfaced. It's a lot of extra time spent, but it can be worth it, like it was here. Once I've made all of the joints clean and added a bit of tapering here and there so it's not nasty and ugly looking, I close up the remaining face fins. I know I said I was done with those, but these needed to attach the membrane to the face, so the curves had to be booled on beforehand. I had to do a bit of extra loop cutting in places to keep the edge flow clean, but it isn't that hard, you just kind of need to keep an eye out for where the joints go and where stuff can be merged to simplify matters.
So let's get started detailing his face. B that little bump behind the eyelid is just a sphere that I had to pummel around a little bit to get it to look right before I booleaned it onto the face. To create the drippies, I found a few faces where the teeth would normally go on an animal, inset those faces, and extruded them downwards, scaling outward and then back in to create a sort of blob shape. I repeat the inset and extrusion steps for each blobby, just sub out the location as necessary. Here I did like 12 below the chin to make a kind of a beard out of these drips. To link each little drippy together, I filled in the gaps between them, similar to the fins, and hid all of the non-drippy facial geometry to sculpt them around so they looked more gooey and organic, as opposed to looking straight and uniform and, you know, not like it was gross goo coming out of its face. Now that we're done with the face, let's get started on his little body fins. They're way less of a hassle, just a few subdivide modified planes that I cut into with a knife tool. Super easy, I just duplicated those and placed them all the way around the body in accordance with the reference image. It's the same operation for the tail fin at the far end of the sea serpent. After doing some quick work on the proportions to make him sort of taper a little bit, it's time to make the long strands that drape down his neck like streamers. It's another subdivided plane that I moved the verts up and down on to make look organic. By the way, this book doesn't gender him, I've just been he hemming the sea serpent because it gives trans masks to me, it looks like a lot of people I know who are trans masks, it has the same vibes, but there's no canon gender, so you know, call it whatever you want. You could use it, it's for all I care. It's really not my place to say. <laughs> Once I've finished duplicating all of those strands, I can go to absolute town on this armature. There are obviously no presets for this kind of body, so we're making it from scratch. Let's diagram this bad boy out. First, I had to divide it into the main structures. Head, neck, body, and tail. Then I started adding lines where I wanted to the basic structures to be. Every long line is a bone chain. I just didn't want to have to draw each bone separately. I gave it a central pivot point to indicate that from there all the bones would face opposite directions, then began mapping out relations. All smaller bone structures are parented to one of the bones in the big chains, as you can see by this list of stuff that will be controlled by specific bones in the chain. Now I said I wanted this head to have a mouth that opens and closes, so to do that we have to build that out. The central head bone will be the controller for the head and that and is what will be parented to the neck bone. It's also what it'll be parenting the eyes to on its own. Then it's very simple, just an upper jaw bone and two lower jaw bones. Then all fins and nubbins and drippies will have their own bone chains parented to those as well, along with well, eight of the long strand thingies at the top of the head. To map out the smaller body fin rigs, it's really simple. It's just two or three bones spread around the fin structure, parented to one control bone, and then that bone is parented to a bone in the big body bone chain. Take a shot every time I say the word bone. These repeat several times, so I'm just explaining how it works this once, and then we can just repeat it as necessary.
finally, to finish it out, the tail is one big bone to control like seven smaller bone chains spread around the different shapes of the fin, parented at the end of the tail bone chain. There's also like 30 to 40 bone chains that control the strands, but I didn't feel like bothering to draw them, and you'll see why soon. <laughs> now, let's get to work on this rig. It's pretty much how I laid it out, so I won't repeat myself. Just stick bones into the model using the last few minutes as reference. I'm going to speed us along here till we get to the danglies. To make the dangly rigs, I did the same thing that I did to make the danglies themselves. I made one chain of bones and then copy pasted them into the rigs several hundred times. Then came the task of distributing the weight. It took a long time to refine the weight around the facial fins. They overlap a lot, so I had to keep unhiding and rehiding bits until I got them to move properly. Everything was swimming along fine until I got back to the danglies. Ah, <sighs> danglies, my absolute beloved. <laughs> It was genuinely impossible to keep track of them all, because I was an idiot and forgot to assign them each different vertex groups and numbers, and then to also number the different bone chains as well, so that I, that would make it really easy for me to parent and like paint everything nicely, but no, I was a dipshit and didn't do that, so I ended up taking the long way around instead. I separated each dangly into its own little object, and each corresponding dangly bone chain into its own little armature, and then I just parented each to its own personal bone chain. But once I got the model all rigged and nice, it came time to work on the textures. To get started on the painting, the first thing I did was to add a very translucent deep green texture to the long strands going down the back of the sea serpent. I then unwrapped all of them and added different shades of turquoise and kelly green to give the tendrils an ombre effect. Then, I gave him his iconic soft brown eyes, and I think they're such a good look because they really add this like warmth to the mostly green, very cool toned guy. I gave him a dilated pupil and a lot of cute little highlights. This isn't strictly speaking necessary because the final shader for his eyes will be very shiny and glossy, but I think it makes my models look extra cute to have them, so I always put them in. I've been trying to be good about the seams this whole model, you saw me putting in seams, but a lot of extra work was still required for all those boolean face fins, and I had to go back in and find more bits that needed to have seams added. This added like an extra two hours and was deeply and immensely frustrating, and I had to do a ton more edge flow correction to get it to unwrap nicely enough. It's also around here that I applied the mirror modifier. I needed to be able to make stuff look different on either side as opposed to the paint job just mirroring itself. With all of the extra work finished, I assigned all the facial slime bits and fin membranes a more translucent lake foam green shade, and then added a bluish ombre at the base of the membranes. To give him his signature mottled shine, I added a noise texture, hooked that into a color ramp node, and attached it to the roughness socket of my BSDF shader in the main body of the sea surface. The entire node map will be available on my Patreon if I haven't flashed it up here and you don't know what it means. So don't worry about it, I've got you covered.
From here, it came time to paint the marbled, deep green, lake foam and sea foam texture on the sea serpent's main body. I just doodled squiggles all along the body from the top, adding little dots and models of low opacity greens in different shades to add variety, extending the wiggles down each side and adding little organic shapes. I did mostly the same when I got to the face, shading most of the eye bits in a darker green and ombreing it and letting it recede outward in a soft wiggly shape as the color approached its mouth, similar to the paintings I was using as reference. To get a bit of a dark lake foam ombre on the bony fin protrusions, I had to do a bit of extra UV rejigging to get like the area that I needed to find just right. This was just to get it to match all the connection points so it looked a little bit more seamless. Alright, final stretch. Added a dark to pale pink ombre on the mouth interior, added little organic shapes and dark green ombres to each little nubbin on the top of his head, gave the Tauruses on either side of the face a bit of light green and yellow texturing, and finally gave the body fins some love. I used the translucent lake foam as a texture base, unwrapped them, and added little squiggles and organic shapes all around them. <sighs> and with that, the model is finished. And I couldn't be happier with the results. I think he looks so stinking cute. He has such a stoner vibe that I think I really managed to get across from the reference. If I had a Dream Blunt rotation, he would be on it. Um, I'm especially happy with the texture work on this one. I think all the extra finagling outside of the paint job was really worth it, because it really sells him as a very friendly deep sea creature. He and his mermaid friend here will be available on Patreon at the end of the month, along with this super cute little 3D printable file of them frolicking in the brine. That's all from me this month, folks. I hope this video is interesting and informative and that you liked learning more about custom rigs built from scratch like this one. I'll be back next month with something a lot less bubbly and bright, but hopefully a little bit simpler. But for now, this is me signing off. Stay frosty, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!